Hello, you're listening to Nerd Bubble Podcast with your hosts, George and Connor. And is it, is it Natasha or is it Lady Logan? Like, who is that shit? I don't know, I have a feeling. Yeah, I can't see the Black Widow. I don't know. No sense how Black Widow is relevant. Maybe like there is a gap in Black Widow where Loki mysteriously appears and, yeah, I don't know. Well, maybe it's in be to say. because they make a point of it being, you know, their variants in time and the branching of realities. So maybe, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. She, yeah. if it's her, it's what happens when Steve puts the stones back. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, and she's like the conscious, the conscious timeline of Steve, like you say, trying to Steve putting back the stones, but then obviously Loki isn't the same exact Loki, and he's fucked up the timeline regardless. Mm. No, because I think it'd be interesting, Mm -hmm. because, like, obviously, they said, like, putting them back wouldn't get the person back, but obviously, like, if it's a soul for a soul, she'd be somewhere, so maybe she becomes the Joker in Batman Arkham Knight to Loki, just, like, in his head. Yeah, Um, that would be cool. I don't know, I'll make it up idea. Yeah. Like this show. 144 episodes. Like WandaVision, eh? Oh, man, I miss WandaVision. Like, as good as Falcon and Winter Soldier is. Like, I do. God, I WandaVision do. was so much fun. Just fun. I miss the I miss the scene the tiniest little detail in WandaVision going, Oh George, what do you think this means? Oh oh wait, well did you see that in the background? There's none there's, there is a bit of that from this episode, I think, in Falcon, but it, it, the only criticism I have with it, there's no tension in the plot. Oh, all right, we've got to stop these flag smashes and we've got to see how John Walker develops as a character. But there's no urgency. It's not like they've got the government on hostage. It's not like they've kidnapped the president. And There's no urgency. It's not like a Mission Impossible type end of the world feel to it at the moment. Mm. It's, it's just this good that like causing like mayhem. the aesthetic that they're going for, really, isn't it? It feels very much sort of like that kind of... Yeah, there's Big no long espionage yeah. movie, and this is the only. We're just gonna let's just dive straight in with Falcon Winter Soldier because hey, everyone, that's what we do. We talk about Disney Plus shows and the news and all that kind of stuff. But like this, compare it's it. The only bit of content it directly this to year was rendered up watching. One is like a movie. This is essentially a six-part movie. Oh, 100 percent, yes. Whereas One Division felt like a sitcom. Yeah. And if yeah, there was an option 100%. to watch this all as like one super long cut, I mean, we've had the Snyder cut of the Justice League, so anything's possible like six hours worth of a movie, I think it would feel... It... Or the Zemo cut, come on, mm. we got, we got to get, we got to get that dance scene, Z- we have to get the Zemo cut. Oh god, he was great in it, that will get into Daniel Broad in a minute, but that, like, it feels, it's good because it feels all one thing, but I think it's bad because I think having it split up into yes. episodes affects the pacing, because what we are in essentially now is Act 2. Yes, exactly. Then it feels very much sort of like, like just yeah. as you're getting into the momentum of it going in, because Act Two's the the turning point of a movie, isn't it? Really, it's it when is. like you know lo- you're no longer oh, the happy go luckiness at the beginning, blah blah blah. This is your set of idyllic, blah blah blah. Something turns and changes, and this is what's then going to drive you into the final act. And I think this week exactly, yeah. Act felt... Two is the point of where you can decide whether you want to stick with it or not. Mm. I think it felt yeah. this week like we'd lost some momentum because it was like building, building, and then it just sort of. Like, then you've got to wait again. I think that's the only thing that sort of really affected yeah. us, is then the wait of... Yeah. Because then we're going to wait for more, the second, essentially the second bit of Act 2, before we get into the final two episodes, and it's... I'm not I'm not saying I'm not enjoying it, but I'm just saying Which like, is, this really feels like a pacing... It's a proper slow burn. It's a proper slow burn. This is the slowest, the slowest slow burn I've had in a while, but then I feel like the finale, when we eventually react to it, what, for two weeks time by the time this comes out, I hope the finale like sort of takes away some of the criticisms. It will be it will be in for a treat. Like I'm hoping the finale will be sort of where everything well, happens weeks, and really? like we'll get that rewarding feel for sticking with it. Well, I mean, by the time this comes out, we would have seen episode four, and then it would it'd be two Fridays. Well, yeah, yeah, because we would have done this Friday. Yeah, so two Fridays now. Yeah, well, from this episode. Cool. Yeah. Um, anyway, I was uh, just checking my rotor. Apparently, I'm down for a fucking wait, but we'll watch it after. That's fine, yeah. All right, no problem. No problem. So, what did you think of. What was the title of this one? 
don't remember. It's just episode three, isn't it? Because that's the thing. When you watch them on the day, they just tend to have their episode numbers and titles. I will go on Disney Plus and have a quick little look. Episode two stars um, Bangled Man. Zemo Dance. <laughs> Zemo Dance. Um, Did the Zemo. I actually have no clue what this one would have been called. It's just the Zemo. Um, Sharon, Power Broker, question mark. Is it the Power um, Broker? Might be the Power Broker. Yeah, just Power Broker. Yeah, that's the t- yeah, just Power Broker. Even though yeah. it only really alludes to that's the Power guess. Broker, we never really see them. The, is the weird, crazy guy? No, or the her, or it. Mm. Is that the Power Broker? I don't yeah. fucking know. He's the person in the comics. He, it's a man in the comics, and he gives John Walker the Super Soldier Serum, and that's how he ends up becoming like like Captain America. Because at the moment, he hasn't got the serum in his blood. So, so at this point in the show, has John Walker not had it? I, as far as I'm aware, I don't think because I swear they said in episode two when we, he's peak human condition, but he hasn't had the serum yet. But then oh, I feel so like that could more, be yeah, okay. Cool. Yeah, that's nice that they're sort of they tie up the basic elements of a character's origin story or their storylines and then sort of like streamline everything I think that's what the MCU has always done really well not to you know just blow Marvel's fucking trumpet like people think we always do but that's as we do always good storytelling <laughs> breeds good like content breeds 100%. like positive audience reaction and then more and yeah, more and yeah, so on yeah. because if you make good things you make money I mean Check out the DCEU. And money the makes DCEU more things. <laughs> DC, oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Different yeah. fucking worlds. I really enjoyed Daniel Brawl in this episode because we sort of, we actually got a full on, I feel like he's very much Saturday morning cartoon villain in Baron Zemo. Like, you know, you're not meant to trust him. He's got the big coat. There's a lot more comedy in their dynamic. Yeah. With the big fucking coat. There's a lot more comedy in their dynamic, which I was expecting. Yeah, yeah. And it's a nice sort of character build from him in Civil War, because Civil War, it was just sort of like he was essentially Zemo in name only. And then, but like he was, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, he's the only yeah. villain to ever win, apart from Thanos once, but then that's exactly that's yeah. done, so. um, Thanos. So to be sort of in that group as a comic book villain, it's an interesting thing because he's human. There's nothing special about it's a pretty, him. It's a pretty niche spot. <laughs> Yeah, because yeah, exactly. He's not powered. He, he, if anything, he just has a mask. And in the comics, he has his own little legion, masters of evil, and yeah. stuff. But really, he isn't like a Galactus. He isn't a CGI cloud. He's not a real alien. He's just a guy that believes in Hydra. Guy. Or in the comics, I think he's more tied to Hydra than he is in the in the MCU at the minute. Yeah. But that's how they address that. Yeah, um, I don't know. I, I kind of. Did you see the memes or oh, the the photo I might have shared or I might have sent to people where it says, "Would you rather trust John Walker or Zemo?" Or like, would you? Is it more likely you trust Zemo than John Walker? Yeah. At the moment, it's like. Mm. But I think because people are like a lot of people that I've spoken to are just like I really don't like John Walker. It's like that's the point of his characters. Like he's not. Yeah, we are. He's yeah, not meant yeah, to be just, hated, but he's yeah. like the whole point is he is not Steve. And you're. Oh, it's come from him clearly isn't. being chosen as Captain America. It's not down to him. He wasn't like, I want to be the new Captain America. But I would like you know, he's like getting loads of death threats. He's, he's come out and said he's got loads of um, death stuff, hasn't he, in real life? Well, why? why oh, Wyatt. Wyatt Russell. He's he's taking it, like, to he's extreme, so like his dad is. Taking yeah. it to his, he's a cool actor. I really want to see more of him. I really want to see more of him. But, I know Overlord I'll be mean to watch, but yeah, I want to see more of him afterwards. Yeah, Overlord is really good. Um, it's yeah. So like the whole point of John Walker is you're not meant to like him. He's not your Captain America. He's America's Captain America. They've chosen him. Blah, blah, blah. He's just doing essentially what yeah. he's been chosen to do. But he also knows that people America's are judging got him Captain. based off of Steve. In terms, of, like in terms of his character in the show, like yeah. he knows that everything he does is going to be compared to Steve because Steve was like the first. He was the first Avenger. He was the fucking. Like the first guy to have super soft yeah. serum, he fucking lifted Thor's hammer, did some amazing fucking things. He was a great guy, one of the pure, one of the only really non morally ambiguous superheroes. Pure outstanding, like 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah, not ambiguous. He was like the the, the ultimate, kind of like Superman esque, like the all American Boy Scout goody goody two shoes, yeah. like who did the right thing and fought for justice and the right. You know, that was his. That is the typical patriarch American yeah, like that, message, but that is his character. That is who he is. Well. Like, how did Marvel get that so right and DC get that mm. so wrong when all Superman is is a fucking oh, Boy Scout who yeah. just stands in like he just stands for justice and all things good. But you know, let's make him dark and broody for some yeah. fucking reason. And like, and that's the thing. Like, they toy with that that there's darker things to Steve, but then they don't go there because they know that he. Oh, every, yeah. every decision he makes is for, you know, trying to make up for the shit. It's the reason why he got so chosen to wear that uniform. Yeah, you know, he 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 wears it with pride, and he goes out and does the best thing that you know. He cha- he's like he constantly challenged himself to keep to make sure he was worthy of wearing the Captain America mantle. Yes. Whereas John Walker, as you see from the brief two minute clip we see of him in this episode, um, he's kind of using and abusing his power. He's showing off his selfish, aggressive like aggressiveness, and he's trying to just abuse the authority to sort of get the information and answers he wants. Like he's doing the opposite to the mantle. Yeah. At the minute. Oh yeah, definitely. And then no, he will only continue down that path of the descent. He's only continuing down that path, and we're going to have to. They're going to have to butt heads eventually. And you, when, when, when's Falcon getting the shield? Is that going to be this episode? Are they going to steal the shield? And is that episode five or six? Maybe. Hmm. Well, because like with like one division, like the thing they focus on in the previously on is essentially just a brief look at the stuff that you need to know going into this one that happened in the previous episodes. And one of the things that included in there was um, Bucky going, oh, we could steal the shield and do it ourselves. That was like the last thing, I think, on the previously on, before we got into this episode. Yeah. I still think Bucky's going to die. As every exactly. Week, as no, every I just I see I that. I feel like he is destined yeah. to sort of free himself and his conscious like, of these... Mm-hmm, terrible mm-hmm. things he's done he's on this whole repenting thing and he's from this episode yeah. last week he is building bridges with Sam they're in terms of like they whether it was just for you know is in the films if you just see that and it's just like they're just pissing about because you know they're both kind of annoyed that Steve had other best friends sort of thing that you know <laughs> that's that's all yeah. almost like the gimmick in it that it's like the two best friends of someone that then they have to get on and that is then leading yeah. to a lot more of a positive interaction between those two. I think more Sam making more effort mm-hmm. after yeah. everything yeah. that he learned about Bucky last week, like because he was constantly worried when they had to, you know, play. Yes. When he had to play Winter Soldier again, that it would be like he was like worried, like yeah. okay, yeah. Like, blah blah blah, and stuff like that. It's like that's. They're doing something, and they're building like when, as soon as Endgame, when you saw Peggy and you see Tony's like thanking his dad, like these two characters are getting closure. They're closing some fucking characterization. Yeah, hundred percent. They're neatly in a little bow. Yeah, they're, they're literally tying up little yeah. strings, and then they're gonna go and seam the deal. Yeah, mm. and as much they as, are. Yeah. I, yeah, I definitely. I'm with you on Sebastian. I'm with you with Sebastian dying. I, I, yeah. As but I think I even not mentioning the ending just yet, but even oh no 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 please I want Sebastian Stan. But if it means we get Luke Skywalker, then please Disney. <laughs> um, no, but uh, even from this ending, which I won't mention just yet, because that's in the ending itself was quite good, and I didn't really see it coming. Like thinking about before we knew what the show was going to be about, talking about Sebastian sort of being man seeking out his redemption and justice and all that. I think if he makes out. If he redeems himself in the eyes of the other people, I won't mention their names just yet. If he mentions, yeah, if he redeems himself in the names of the da 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 da, da then because he will go out as White Wolf, that's all I'll say. Because he's not, he's he's trying to fight the Winter Soldier identity, but we all know he won't be Captain America. But if he goes out as the White Wolf, well, we all think then... he won't be Captain America. There's still a lot of love and <laughs> fan art for Bucky to have because Bucky. So Bucky picks it up. I mean, yeah, Bucky picks it up after Steve in the comics, and then Sam. And all right, so it's Bucky first, okay? Yeah, but I think yeah. Bucky is the first one to take over the legacy of that. And a lot of people <clears> in the <throat> game were like, "Why? Why was it Sam? Why was it not Bucky?" Because Bucky's been in a shit place. He's been brainwashed. He's been a fucking Nazi, fucking assassin. 
And, he's been and even not in the eyes of the American population, if people recognised him as a soldier, they wouldn't want him. They wouldn't want that face to be the face of the American. Like they wouldn't want the public eye wouldn't look fondly as a oh, terrorist. All right, they, they'll know the that he was brainwashed. Or they wouldn't look at him and think, yeah, he, yeah, 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 exactly. Further down the line, maybe, right, yeah, because maybe you could. Heck, have, maybe Falcon dies. That's what I was just going to say. Maybe then it's the other way around of like. A good man dies. Oh, no. That he was trying to make Cats America, and it's mm. like the well, like it was someone who like Captain America passed it on to him. He should have been Cap. He's been killed. I'm not letting the government do this. I will do this in honor of both of them. It could be, it could be that way, and then yeah. get. But then this show is really making me like Anthony Mackie as Falcon again, and I think that he's. He really is yes. excelling from not yeah. being with anyone else. I, like he's excelling from not being with the Avengers. The same compliment I'll give um, Paul Bettany and Elizabeth Olsen. I, I don't see them acting as the characters. I just see the actors. But like they're actually just yes. given the chance to be themselves and just just, stri- just like strutting be themselves stuff. in this mad universe. Yeah, they're just doing their own thing. Like I, after this, I, again, I keep saying about John Walker, but I want Sebastian Stan in more things. Like I haven't seen him in anything else other than the Marvel stuff. I've not seen him in anything. John Walker, I want to see more of. Like Anthony Mackie, I need to see more of. Like one, I want to see the Hurt Locker, is it? Which I've heard about for months, if not years. Yeah, uh, it's like a war. I think it's a war yeah. film action thriller thing. It's meant Renaton, to be the right? bollocks. It's meant to be the bollocks, but mm. decent. Yeah, I remember watching that years ago. That was. I probably haven't watched it since, but yeah, Renner's in that. That's good. Decent, decent. Um, so basically, the plot of this one is they broke, they break Zemo out of jail, or did they, or did they do it before? Did Bucky do it on his own? We'll never tell, because <laughs> they wanted to talk. Well, to exactly. Because it's like, that funny conversation. They, um, he, Bucky was consoling Falcon. He sort of like, hey, don't get mad at me, but we're gonna have to break Zemo out of prison. And he, I mean, Falcon the whole time sort of against the idea because again, Zemo beat the Avengers. He's the reason why they all split and. You wouldn't want to trust him, really. No. He's kind of like the next Loki. There's more on that as well mm. later on, but mm. he's kind of like the next Loki. You don't really know whether to trust him, but you like him at the minute. Um, but anyway, they have a little debate, and Bucky sort of is, is sort of like, "Oh, I've done it anyway." And the episode could have been getting Zemo out of it. The whole episode could have been them getting Zemo out of prison, but then luckily, that's the only nitpick as well. It, it felt like they had so many plot points, or we could have had expanded scenes, mm. and they just skipped it. Like you say, we lost momentum because it, every potential bit we could have expanded upon, it just kind of glossed over and just skipped. But then, like you said, the whole episode would bit. have essentially been breaking him out, and then you lose the um, interactions. Yeah, and it would have been a bit long. It would have been too much momentum. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so um, yeah that gets done. But yeah, we get them out of prison right in the first like five minutes. That's not even the ten minute mark. It's just... Uh, he's out of prison and them three are together throughout the whole show. Um, they trio. head off to Mandrapore. Exactly. Well, I didn't know we needed this trio. They're great. Um, but anyway, I didn't know Island, that we were going to go to Mandrapore this early. Yeah. Um, but it's also been like, teased. It's a location used in the X-Men comics. And I'm not saying Quicksilver doesn't appear or we don't see Cyclops' glass. We don't see Hugh Jackman in the bar. But, I don't know, <laughs> it's kind of a tease at this point. It's kind of a tease. Um, but yeah, Mandrapore turns up already. And essentially, it's this sort of dark, dystopian, neon Blade Runner um, vibes. Uh, it reminded me of cyberpunk. Very, again, technology, like, futuristic on the on the wall, you have a, a sort of a poster saying the power broker's watching, and they keep talking about this power broker quite a bit in this episode. Um, and it's basically where like the criminal scum sort of hang out. Mm-hmm. Um, and it even reminded me a little bit when we actually get into the bar. It reminded me, I imagine like the Moss Eisley Cantina, but on Earth. Yeah, yeah, I get that. Uh, yeah. I get what you mean with that. That's saying, yeah, it's very much sort of that kind of thing, isn't it? Oh, this is the this is a hive of scum and villainy. Han Solo's here. This is the like, like the low life, the co- the common folk bit of um, yeah, I guess. Um, I don't know. I, I'm trying to think stuff happened in between. Or is that the gist? They went to Mandrapur straight away. 
they they sort did, of they, no. they they break out. You know, we get a plane that looks a lot like yeah. Um, they talk the for a bit for the yeah. fucking X Men Days of Future Past because you know I'm a Baron. Like I was rich before you guys. Is yeah, Zemo has a butler. Yeah, like it was never alluded to in Civil War because he was just like a no. war war veteran and you know family was killed in Sokovia. Blah blah blah. I mean, Sokovia was essentially. I think one of his lines in this is like wiped off the map. You know, because it was, it's not mm. in the comics, is it? Sokovia's not. No, but it's also, apparently it's next to, or even, but it's neighbouring. Oh, no, actually no, Sokovia, I think in the comics it's the other name for Latveria. Or Latveria is basically next door to Sokovia. Hmm. I think that's what it is. When Doctor Doom eventually turns over, it t- like t- yeah, appears yeah, in the yeah. comics, he takes over Sokovia and renames it to Latveria. I think, I think that's how it goes down. Sokovia is kind of Latveria, or it, they're next door to each other, or something like that. They're related. They're linked somehow. Oh. they're linked. Well, more, the more you know, and yeah. So then, yeah, yeah. The, <laughs> I don't know. The pa- are they? Is it Sharon that tells them about the power broker? Because they go undercover to get to this woman. Um. Don't they? That's first. Yes. And then there's like... Yes, you know, there's yes, 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 yes. It'll yes. go in disguise. Bucky has to play Winter Soldier again. Basically, pretend he's still under the influence. Like, it goes with Zemo just in fucking his game. Mm-hmm. And Sam is disguised as Smiling Tiger, is it? Is that... Which is an actual villain from the comics, which I didn't realise. I thought it was just a random nickname. Yeah, it turns out it's an Easter egg. I like how that's how they just it's like, villain in the com- these kind of yeah. these obscure things. We'll just sprinkle those throughout. And obviously it goes wrong because they're trying to get information. Someone, I think, is it one of the Flag Smashers? Because it's not Sharon, because Sharon doesn't know about it until... Um, yes. Yeah, they kill well. the, the contacts. Because <laughs> the ones they cover is broken. Well. <laughs> yeah. It sort of saves them, doesn't it? Because yeah. they were about to be killed by these people anyway. Yes. Yeah. And then they escape and we bump into Sharon Carter. Ooh, Emily Van Campesto. In not seen since Civil War. Um and she and all we got teased before the show, again, the little bits of information. She's a very different character and yeah, she's a basically stuck up bitch in this, but she's got reasons. But she, oh, yeah, she's got I don't reasons. I don't trust her. I trust her. No, I don't, I don't, I don't trust her, though. I don't... She basically got... No, but down. is she going to turn up in each episode with a little bit of information? Is she going to... I don't know. I don't trust her. Something about her just didn't seem right with me. Well, because know. she was so sort of different to how she'd been previously, or...? Yeah, beforehand, yeah. But she was basically... Yeah, because she's she's basically like she... Extradited, wasn't she, really, by yeah. the government... <laughs> Yeah, she didn't get pardoned by the government, so she's had to sort of live her life on the run these last five years, like pre-blip and then post-blip. She's had to just, you know, get by by herself, and she's been hanging out in Mandrapur, sort of making a name amongst these criminal scum, I guess, um, and sort of selling... Didn't she say she sells something as a business front anyway? Like, she just yes, sort like of gets work, by her own and... It's like that extravagant artwork. Yeah, that's it, yes, yes, yeah, artwork. Blending, I was going to say, it's like shoes. Yeah. yeah, just you get the fucking Zemo dance. Yeah, um, yeah, that's like half a second. I mean, release the Zemo cut. I, I mean, that's already trending and breaking Twitter. But <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if by the end of this show, we'll just get it as an extra. It don't have to be a whole episode. You just like a one give us like really. a a good ten minute. Oh, exactly. Just an extended look at them in the in the nightclub. That's all we want. Um, no, but then we. Yeah, so they find Sharon Carter, she gives them more information. Oh no, they find Sharon, then they have to go into the the like the underground nightclub, talk with a certain grey-haired lady that gives them information to do with the power broker. Um, and then they also get tipped off to go to this container yeah. like in this um, shipping yard, um, which we see in some of the trailers, there's a, there's a shot where Zemo on top of freights or yeah whatever yeah which we got like then, so we knew I'm this like, bit that was... seemed like a big villain moment for him in the trailer but it, he's essentially like the yeah. Delgado master of it isn't he he's just sort of like flitting between whatever side suits him he's Moriarty-esque just sort of doing his shit yeah. to sort of stay yeah. on the winning side 
he'll definitely have a moment where he'll go against Zemo, and, oh, sorry, Falcon and um, Winter Soldier, and then they'll just have to be, be like, nah, the this was a bad idea. Show, yeah. Teasing a possible second season or like a reappearance as the full villain in the films. Possibly, because I mean, if they've got a deal with Power Broker, yeah. So, because let's say the whole season, really, they've got to deal with the the Power Broker slash Fag Smashers. Then you've got John Walker, wherever they go with his character, and then you've got Zemo potentially potentially going in his own little scheme. That's a lot for three episodes. That's a lot for three episodes. In, in um, they deal with so Batman. yeah, if anything, I think this could get a second. Mm. Off the back like of next Batman episode, four, maybe I don't know. Because that's sort of yeah. like the structure of the films now, isn't it? Um, more than one. But there's like the primary, and then there's all. There's like you know, you had Batroc Zilliper in uh, when in the Winter Soldier. Like you had that kind of stuff. So it's Zilliper, like, yeah. You know, maybe maybe it's not impossible. But Do you, well, you think like he will one. come back? What? Batroc. Do you think he'll come back for whatever reason? I think Batroc Is he the power him. broker? Is he the power broker? Imagine if Batroc Zilipere <laughs> Zilipere was <laughs> Zilipere, the actual yeah. villain. He the power broker. It was Batroc all along. <laughs> <laughs> it was Batroc the power broker Ooh, all along. It was Captain America. And Hydra. It was Batroc all along. <laughs> I don't know, that'd be pretty fun. God. Oh, no. That would be brilliant. That exists in the MCU. Anyhow, (laughs) you were saying, darling, about the container. (laughs) There was a man in there. Yeah, so they essentially did... A brief thought I thought it was going to be like... Sorry, I thought it was going to be fucking... um, What's his face? Um, The leader. Fucking Sam Stearns or whatever his name The leader. Is. Oh, what, from Hulk? Yeah. Yeah, yes, I've seen videos on him after this episode saying that he, they reckon he could be the power broker. Or I've seen General Ross could be behind it. But it's all to do with, basically, it's not because he's turning his back against America. It's all just to do with the Super Soldier Serum. Mm. It's all to that do with that. That was his obsession in... I mean, that's the only reason. That's his obsession in most fucking uh, Hulk. stuff, you know? Is you know, it is, yeah. Hulk's created um, fucking remake this fucking serum. Oh, Ross, I think it would feel a lot more Winter Soldier in terms of oh, there's people in the government that are fucking doing this because he's now a senator, isn't he? Well, Secretary of State, and yes, he's yes, sort of he's got yes, maybe yeah. like the whole thing in Civil War of him appearing to you know have changed a bit more, and the whole reason he's in there is be like oh, Hulk still exists, guys. That film still did happen. But like in his brief yeah. appearance in Infinity War, he's very much on the sort of like the J. Jonah Jameson thing of like getting in power so he can try and shut this down and silence these fucking positive voices kind of thing almost. It seems like that kind of thing. But uh, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. I'd be interesting. <laughs> but I think I think the leader would be interesting mm. if it was him. I like great. the leader if, more. If there's one thing I'd that really the, like... ca- the Captain America mm. franchise is ironically quite good at is making it's been yeah. bringing in Hulk characters and making them like decent and work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, you're not wrong about that. Yeah, <laughs> and that's how you don't have to, you know pay your yeah. muscle for another Hulk movie. I don't know. Oh, I'd love the leader. I'd like Sam Stearns to be back because I think that's just such a fucking undangled thread well after Watchmen I, I've got so much respect for Tim Blake Nelson I, I, as the actor I, I, yeah I, yeah, I, I want no, Tim Blake no, yeah, Nelson like, in more things <laughs> mm. um, or like again the last thought that would pop up was Zola Arnim Zola before the series began like, he was the one that kept floating around that like, mm. I kept reading about was what if he comes back in this series because he's another AI I mean he's probably in the cloud like Ultron somewhere I mean, he could be. He, he be, could be he like Bucky is put on ice. Yeah. He could be shut down, and he could be. Yeah, oh, like exactly. Like, yeah. He's I don't know. It, they're too similar of a concept. Right. Is this that? It's the fact that we got so many villains that are, have the potential to come back. Oh, is Sharon, Sharon, <laughs> Sharon Carter Zola? Is Sharon Carter Arnold Zola? Sharon Zola. 
Mm. Um, I forget what really happened with the rest of it. So they're a bit. They have their sort of thing where early on she was. It's basically the action control. sequence in this that this container. Yeah, the container is basically yeah, yeah, the yeah, only yeah, real yeah. set piece, isn't it? Like they're talking to the guy who's there. Yes, big action sequence. Perfected the super soldier serum. Because like, basically, who's also in the comics? Mm. I read about afterwards. I can't remember. He, Doctor Nagel or something like that. Yeah. He apparently perfected the serum. I think for the power broker in the comics. Um, uh, and then, that, yeah, and then the rest has gone blank. I mean, he don't really do much, but he's essentially a guy to do with the super soldier serum in the comics anyway. Um, yeah, and who had managed to work like you say, our characters they, talk to him. Like before the blip, yes, you yeah. unlocking that genetic sequence, then like, yeah, oh yeah, of course. you get dusted, and then you come back, and then you know the world's gone to a bit of shit, and there's power vacuums that are then well interested in this serum, and he's like he makes a point, doesn't he? Like refined it, like made it subtle, like it's not like making you like massive and mm -hmm. strong, it's just giving you the strength in like in yourself, not changing you to like a big muscle clad superhero. It's just elevating what's already there. Kind Hence of thing. John Walker. It's perfect for John Walker. It's perfect for John Walker. Mm. Or maybe it will come out and say he's already had it in secret and he's gone behind America's back to get no, that he gets done his ass to become... kick quite easily on that maybe. fucking lorry. I mean, he, puts, he does. He puts up a bit of a fight. He, I mean, he handles himself. We get, like you say, he gets his ass kicked. Hmm. Yeah, he does get his ass kicked. He's an interesting place to leave. He's not then, there yeah. yet. He's not an Avenger yet. He's not an Avenger yet. Yeah. I'd really um, hate if then... Mm. Well then, is this, I think, like, I've seen some people like, you know, lead to speculation this, like, with the creation of White Vision and, like, US agent Captain America, is this yeah. a road that can lead into the Dark Avengers? That you've got a government body that have set up their own yeah. created group of superheroes against, you know, the yeah. real ones. And then you get an Avengers versus Avengers style all out kind of, I don't know. It's an interesting idea. And then the X-Men turn up at the end. <laughs> it's a triple threat. Watch our show on Disney+. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> um, no, I see that potentially, but then the only other real link with Phase 4 as a whole is the Young Avengers. I mean, we had the two kids in WandaVision. Um, with Isaiah Crawford, his son, I think Elliot or something, I mean, he's a little boy in this show now, but he turns out to be Patriot in the comics, and mm -hmm. Patriot is basically kid Captain America, and he becomes the leader of the Young Avengers. So how have we not had any more time with him if he's meant to be a Young Avenger? last week, wasn't it, really? So two. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We might get back to them, yeah, of course. Um uh, but yeah, supposedly he's like Kid Captain America, Young Avenger Captain America, the leader. Um, really? Iron Heart is going to be the next Iron Man figure. We'll have, I don't know, will we? <laughs> yeah, White Vision will become, I don't know, Kid Vision. <laughs> there is, I don't think there's a. Kid. Um, I don't know. There's so many links, and uh, with Hawkeye, we're getting um Kate Bishop. Echo as well. These are all other characters that are definitely going to become a young Avengers it's at really some point. It's really expanding the oeuvre. But, um, yeah, it ends with yeah. Baron, Zemo, uh, Sam and Bucky driving off in the car to their, essentially their next main story mission. Because they've found out what the power broker wants. Which we don't know just yet. Rob and Sharon's yeah. basically said, fuck off, I'm not coming with you. And that's where we're leaving it for this week. Yeah, bye. Um, interesting, I think. Like, but then she like, goes in the car and she says, like, oh, we've got a problem. She says on the phone, like, we've got two problems. But the, the problems, two of them can't be Falcon and Bucky. She's got Zemo as well. Is Zemo, unless Zemo's with them. I don't know, like, who's the problems? I don't know. We'll have to wait two days What's after problems, we record this and mm. a week to talk about it. Because that's that. Um, yeah, decent. I think, like, the pacing problems and stuff, like we said, like, there's them kind of things. But all in all, I enjoyed this episode. I liked it. It's not... Still a fun episode. Still a fun episode. But yeah. Um, it's... it's the thing. It's not been a bad episode yet. It's no. not been a bad one. Exactly. It's it's decent. I feel, I feel like the last three are really going to... Especially... Five and six, I think, are really going to be the point of, like, this is the the last act. This is the finale. Let's see where we go. But speaking it's going to matter. Yeah. Things mm. ending. 
You get other branches, other variations. Time splintering off in all directions, some would say. Because we got a new trailer. Oh, we got two oh, new trailers okay. this week. Yeah. But um, we got a new trailer for Loki. Yay. 11th of June, the air date. Mm, randomly. The Loki, Disney Plus. Six part television series, but this is going to feel a lot more different. I think it's six. God, I'm pretty sure it'll be like better this. Better than the last thing yeah. we got. This feels like Doctor Who. Mm. It did. It felt like Doctor Who and. The Silurians. I don't want to say X Files. I don't know. Doctor Who and Silurians. The whole, so whole six episodes going to be one big long story. Um, yeah. I don't know what else did it remind me of. It reminded me of like another mystery type show, but I can't think what. But yeah, Doctor Who vibes definitely. I mean, he goes back in time. He's got to fix the timeline because all we all well, we all know from Endgame, Captain America sort of sacrificed his well, sacrificed his life and then got a happy ending anyway. He went back in time and put the Infinity Stones back in place again. The Soul Stone that's kind of up in the air because a soul for a soul. Like, how exactly is that going to be this. answered at some point? How is that going to... It has to be addressed at some point. Even if we get a Captain America show in five years' time, it has to get answered at some point. Um, but then, of course, this Loki isn't our Loki. This is, as the trailer points out, a variant um, from Endgame who was evil back in 2012. He essentially escapes. He grabs the Tesseract and escapes, and voila, he disappears. And that's all we see of him in Endgame. And then... He his character, I guess, will go on an adventure with the Time Lord Gallifreyan Variant Agency, or whatever they're called, the TVA yeah, or the something, TVA, Time, Time Variant Agency. That Loki's heard agency. of, led by, oh, we get Owen Wilson in the mm. MCU, talking about how, you know... Wow. Like, essentially, wow. Like, essentially reiterating what the Ancient One said to Bruce in Endgame, that, you know, the branches of reality and stuff, and there's turns out there's these people that, you know, sort that out, these... The time variants, but then Makes it's a sense. bit different now because they round essentially seem to be rounding them up and using them. He's using <clears> Loki <throat> to essentially fix the sort of almost broken timelines or like, use rifts in time. There's more of a thing mm. at play here now. It's time anom anomalies. There's anomalies in the main timeline now, and he's got them two have got to go and fix it. Yeah, that's all we kind of know on and, paper. And if they're rounding them up, like <laughs> variants, like people from other timelines that now exist, does that play a part into Guardians with Gamora? Is that going to have an effect? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Yes. Um. Well, maybe. It's definitely a maybe. We can't say no because the whole point of time travel and alternative versions of characters. I mean, we can't rule anything off. Well, I mean, look at Doctor Who, for Christ's sake. We can't say no to anything until it happens. Yeah. We'll never know until we see it. Will so, we? any, it'll be the next WandaVision. We'll speculate, like, a certain triangle will be there. It'll be like, oh, it's Mephisto's triangle, for all we know. It'll be the next WandaVision. It'll be, like, a proper headache to figure out, but I'm hoping... It won't exactly be one division, but there will be a lot more room more week to week to, to discuss that mystery back and, and forth and stuff. More sci fi elements. Mm -hmm. Now we're playing with time travel and all the dimensions a lot more. Is that going to have had an effect and play into some of the stuff we've seen in one division? It's made me more excited for Loki when I was sort of a bit like. And multiverse, is it going to affect Doctor Strange even? Would it affect Doctor Strange even? Po like, possibly. possibly. I don't know. Would it affect the multiverse? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, the thing in it is, it's hard to sort of judge because One Division was so left field and we didn't see much of it coming. And then the bits we started when we sort of cottoned on to what kind of show it was, it was like, oh, this is sort of the wider story they're telling. It's going to sort of, I feel, a bit like that with Loki. Mm. It's like because it seemed like it was just going to be sort of like a catch me if you can in space, like him on the run through these different dimensions. But now he's getting tasked to do something, which is like giving it an arc giving it some hopefully character development for a version of Loki that is now without all the development we've seen. So will it become more akin to the Loki that we know? Yeah. And will it essentially be he does all this and then gets Maybe. placed back in that timeline and arrested and allowed to then become the version of that Loki? That would be it. Yeah, like a one-off 
type series. Yeah, that'd be it. Mm. I know. I'm interested. Mm. I'm really intrigued. I think the whole concept goes a bit risky because I mean, all right, we had. Oh yeah, no, this trailer is sort of sold me on it, and I mean, yeah, I was going to watch this anyway. It's a Marvel. We're contracted to anyway, for God's sake, at this point. Um, but killing off a main character in like your stuff. in your first first part of a two part. <laughs> Your big, like one of the biggest characters. I mean, Loki, in a roundabout way, is the whole reason I watched the MCU because four came out before. Third. I'm pretty sure four was like the fourth movie, and then Captain America came out a couple of months later. And I remember watching Chris Hemsworth, and I was like, "Yeah, he's good. I don't know who you are, but yeah, four's cool." But then I remember walking out of the movie, going, "I want more of you, horny green horny. spandex man, Loki, yeah. Tom and Hiddleston." Just to see it next year. Oh. Oh. <laughs> the fanboy. <laughs> no, but Loki in a roundabout way is the reason why I sort of kept up with the MCU. The first villain that sort of everyone loved. It was like uh, he's evil, but yeah, like, he's the villain of and got right like two mm. films, like the first Avengers film and the first Thor film. Like they're pretty yes. important in terms of the shape of the MCU and the history of that. And then there's a character that then some feel like they sort of just like were clinging on to his popularity to, to then use him when like there was almost like a completion to his arc and stuff like that but he's endured and I think that there was it did genuinely feel like a shame when Loki does eventually die in Infinity War and yeah. this allows us to it was, it was a shock mm. it was a shock I feel like this is definitely sort of like the final like round of Tom Hiddleston this is the this is the last lap of sort of like, because yeah. they're not going to work yeah. on them kind yeah. of things. This is going to be, it'll eventually for however long this version of Loki stays alive, this will be the last sort of thing that he does. And if I that to then yeah. give Tom Hiddleston that ability to play a younger, um, like more morally ambiguous character that is not affected by the stuff that now hasn't happened to him. So I think that will be an interesting way to go with it. Think. But you know, yeah. like you could, like yeah. we say, it could always subvert our expectations. We're never going to fully know what happens until we see it, so it's always a possibility. It's just going to be hard when we finish Falcon Winter Soldier, and then we've got because that ends 23rd of April, and then we've got that gap to June the 11th, and we've got like no content. I mean, we'll have a new thing called the Bad Batch, where if you don't know what that is, folks, May the 4th. It's a Star Wars animated cartoon like series. That. That's going to be good. Mindful. Be nice to sort of dive into something like that and have mm. a bit of a break because it was going to be new, like MCU stuff every week. But then obviously the delay to um, yeah. Widow's kind of scuppered that, and <clears> we'll see how that eventually pans out. We got a new trailer for that as well, didn't we? That was good. Yeah, Black Widow. But I mean, they're not. They, they didn't show off a lot of new footage. No. They're just using the same old stuff. Again. This is a. We had to make another trailer to stay relevant so you'd have something new to watch. Because we didn't expect to still not have the movie. Mm -hmm. But I'm still. I still like Black, Black Widow and sort of like the look and feel this film's going for. It feels <clears> a lot more along the, the Winter Soldier vibe of like espionage and like. Oh, yeah, 100%. It's going to be interesting to see when this finally does come out and the stories that we get told between the gaps in everything that's happened, you know, like Civil War and Infinity War and all that stuff. And hopefully we get a lot more, like, sort of, we actually get a lot more sort of told be. to us about this character and their, like, the family and we get some great David Harbour as exactly. in Red Guardian, that's what I want to say. <laughs> Mm, Russian Captain, Captain America Americas in some comics. In the MCU at the minute. If you think about it. Yeah, 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 it's four Captain America, you're bloody hell, yeah, there is. Fucking we're drowning. They should be That's kind of a scary thought. <laughs> yeah, you got Red Guardian, US Agent, mm. Sam and Bucky, essentially four different versions of Captain America. At the same time. I say a Crawford who's a black old man that appeared last week. That's five. <laughs> yeah. He was there. Five. <laughs> yeah. Five. Zemo, um, six. I don't know. Yeah. Sharon, <laughs> fuck it, she'll hold it. <laughs> Captain, Captain Zemo. <laughs> Captain. Does he become Captain America in the comics? Fucking cool if he did. I don't know. I'm just making it up now. I'm just naming characters. 
Tim Blake Nelson, <laughs> he's Captain America. We're all Captain America now. So did Justice America. Ooh. Um, but we did quickly mention mm. the ending of Falcon Winter Soldier and yeah, kind yeah. of what it meant going forward. I, I guess. So, if you didn't get what I meant by the white one earlier, if anyone's still somehow listening to this dribble, like, thank you, if oh, you yeah, got this far in the video. Um, <clears throat> huh? I can't believe you got that bit. <laughs> yeah, it was a cheap plug. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, well, yes, um, it's kind of important, because basically the Wakandans are back. I mean, there was this, they were walking in, I don't know, say the city of Prague. I don't know exactly where they were heading, because like George said earlier, they were heading off to the next story mission in episode four. Um, which we haven't seen at the time of recording. Um, then Bucky notices these white little, like they, look, I thought they were like little grenades or something. There's like these white silver little coin pellets. They're like things. the balls and like, from. Um, and I thought it was going to be a different. Like when he throws them and they're sort of like the um, the scanning thing or whatever. I don't know. Also, did you know what they were? Because I didn't. I like, saw them. You know, like, they they? Them, they have the, like the balls that then like display the holograms and stuff. They're like communication slash, I'm guessing, spy. Right, it's one of the... Oh, okay. But it wasn't Okoye, even though Okoye was trending, because that right, was okay. the era. That was... Um... Uh, Ayo. 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 From Civil War. Civil War. And move, or you will a be bit moved. of Black Panther. A bit of Black Panther. Yeah. And yeah, Civil move, move, move. That's her scene. Yeah, that's right. That's right, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Interesting, because, um, so obviously they, so they're there for Zemo, and it was interesting the fact that um, mm. Black Panther's going to tie into this show, and we shall see. Is this potentially going to set up the TV spin-off, or the second film, maybe? Because I know this show is going to be linked to Phase 4 and all the future shows and stuff, but is this going to set up the Black Panther series? Like, will something happen to Zemo? Will he get taken off the show to then be on exile and trial in Wakanda? And then that's what the Black Panther thing will be about, maybe? I don't Possibly. Know. I wouldn't be surprised if it was sort of a semi lead into that kind of thing. I'm here for it. Because, you know. Trial of a Baron. Trial of a Baron. Maybe. Could be. The justice system in Wakanda, and it's like Law and Order, but in Wakanda. I don't know. It's an interesting thought. I, completely, I can't believe we completely got sort of like glossed over that. Thing. Completely forgot that happened. That's a thing that happened, and so is the Black <laughs> Widow trailer, which looks as good as it did the first four hundred yes, times. Yes. And I don't know. If cinemas are open. I think maybe what third or fourth trailer at least. Mm. Then I'm, I'm not going to play pay premier access. I'll just go and see it in the movies. That's where I'll go. Well, I mean, will we? Will we though? Because. Breaking the full full a little bit. I mean, you know, COVID passports. Cinemas apparently are required and mandatory to get in there, but will they even happen? Like, I don't want to be delayed another six months just because we haven't got a passport, a COVID passport. I don't know. They're working out because they'll need money, and maybe the government will get their stuff together. But I mm. doubt it's going to be any time fucking soon. But you know, the roadmap's <clears> not going ahead at the moment. But I think from Monday the twelfth, when the pubs are reopened, yeah. that's going to be the sign of. You know, how big is the spike? Is this going to affect the next right, what do we do in next? five weeks' mm. time? And so on. So I'm not holding my breath, but I'm, you know, cautiously hoping no. that we can carry on the way that we're going. Because it would be nice to see Black Widow in the cinema, because I don't really want to pay like 30 quid to watch it at home. But then I don't know, that's just me. No, no, but at least with Disney Plus, we keep it. We keep it. Like, it's not a Godzilla vs. Kong where you keep it for a month and then you click it and you've got to watch it in 24 hours. Did you watch Godzilla That's a rental. Nah. No. <laughs> no, my mate sent me a link. You know, obviously, legal sources, of course, legal. Nothing illegal goes on here. Um, <laughs> but um, I, I'm saving it for the big screen. I mean, I think, well, even look, I'm imagining the lineup of when they eventually do open. It'll be a couple old things like it was last summer. But I don't know, honestly, what it would be to week one to get us sitting back in theatres, unless it's, Godzilla like, say, the Snyder Gut would have didn't have got now TV. It'll be Godzilla vs. Kong. It'll be... You've got Jason Statham's Guy Ritchie's new movie. That's out, I think, when they open. Like, Wrath of Man or something. That's a Guy Ritchie movie, so fuck, you'll see that. Statham and I'll do whatever the fuck I'm paid to do. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to do the Meg 2. Champagne problem. that dinosaur. The greatest tragedy 
Is that even coming out? Is the Meg 2 happening? Is that, is that a happening. thing? It's got an old Doctor Who director doing it, Ben Wheatley, who directed in Series 8. Oh. So it's going to be, right. like, I think it's called, like, The Trench or something. You know, now that, you know, fucking Aquaman and that, they're not making that spin-off. Not related to DC. No. <laughs> not, not related to DC, the no. The layer of the floor where the Meg lived, wasn't it? And then the Meg managed to fucking follow him up and then... It's a Megalodon. But we shall see what happens in cinemas in May the 17th. Hopefully, unless yeah. the world has crashed again. But in the meantime, there's not really much else that happened, yeah. there? We sort of marvelled it up a bit. Um, I mean, things you tagged me in last night about, you know, um, the J.J. Abrams Superman possibly being set in a different DC Earth. Um, yeah, the, so the Batman yeah. is not the DCU, it's on Earth 2. <clears throat> and possibly the JJ Abrams reboot will be which is fine. adjacent. Maybe that's what they do. Their alternate universe, universe thing. I don't know because I feel like if Flashpoint, which works, will then be eventually point, confirmed, and these other films work, they're going to want to yeah. be like, well, if we put like fucking Ezra Miller and Robert Pattinson, and let's say it's Michael B. Jordan and Superman in one thing, that'd be pretty cool. But it's going to be. Yeah. Confusing to have that going when Henry Cavill has already said he's like he's not done with Superman, already wanted to sort of carry on stuff with that. There's you know, fucking so many different versions of the Joker, yeah. Batman flying about. It's... Do you think they won't team up? Possibly. Do you think they'll both be in the movie? Maybe like Men of Steel instead of Man of Steel two or whatever, or just Man of Steel twenty twenty four. Do you think it will be Men of Steel and they'll both be in it? Maybe I don't know. Could they cool. both co lead a film? That'd be nice to sort of see. It depends where they go with their universe stuff, if they're going to just, you know, cross-splice and all that stuff. I, I think with DC... We've but we, but we as viewers, we cannot predict what the hell DC are thinking, because, I mean, they just they reboot every two minutes. They, they yeah, don't know what That's the doing. thing, like, from they all the stuff know. that was announced after, like, Batman v Superman, and the films that have actually come out, and then the stuff they've announced that, you know, we've got to take with a pinch of salt, because we don't know whether it's actually going to come out or when it's going to happen or stuff like that. So, for me, it's a bit sort of like we've just got to wait and see. Because, you know, we know we're getting a Black Adam yes. and a Shazam movie, hopefully, whether they'll cross them over and fight them together, that would be great. Whether the Suicide Squad will hopefully get sequels, whether eventually the Snyder Cut will get a fucking, an actual sequel to a different Justice League Something movie. Something like, of an extent. Whether it um, will happen, I don't the know. The Death, Deathstroke's been getting a bit of traction. On HBO Deathstroke's Max. been getting a bit of traction. HBO Max series. Yeah, which I would... I mean, for the sake of Joe Joe Man, Mangiello, yeah, that is his name, right? Joe Man, Mangiello. He's had two... Basically, he's run, as, he's run as Deathstroke. He's had two post credit scenes of the same scene, but with different dialogue. I mean, that's all he's done, for God's sake. I mean, he's something. It's a shame he's we're something. never going to get that Batman-Ben Affleck movie. Because at that point, it was like, this is going to be cool, and it's like, ah. Oh. No. They've never had... The Kevin Feige to sort of oversee everything, so I don't know. It would I think it would feel very Punisher-ish, and it would it would work for that stuff. But obviously, it's just going to make you want him in a Batman movie or in an actual, you know, Legion of Doom style shit. I don't know. It does Joe deserves an actual shot at Deathstroke. So I don't know. It's whether Warner Brothers and that can make the right decisions because proven by their track record, they can't because. They're cancelling films that people want to see and nope. films that people don't nope. want, so I don't know. It's a thing. It might happen. We'll see if no. that does or doesn't happen in the next couple of hours after we finish recording like it normally does. And then I also read yesterday that um, Last of Us is filming, I think it's this July. Yes. It's beginning to be filming in this July, but then it isn't, apparently filming won't end till next June. Which is an awfully long time for a show to be recording, right? Eleven months. It's normally a nine-month production cycle, isn't it? Nine to ten months. But it's not. It's not unheard of, but it's a bit sort of long for that kind of thing. I don't know. That's uh, something. Yeah, whatever they're trying to plan. Because we don't know anything about episode count length. We don't know. They're still trying to cast people at the minute. I mean, Pedro Pascal's been confirmed. Um, I mean, it's very, very early stages. But if all of it goes ahead, does this mean, you know, late 2022, early 2023 release date, potentially? I mean, if COVID doesn't delay anything even more. 
Mm. I look I look forward to that show. That's going to be good. I downloaded Last of Us remastered on PS5 because it was on the um, PlayStation Plus yes. monthly thing. It was like seven games that I downloaded. It was it was that. It was Until Dawn, Ratchet and Clank, Uncharted Four. Oh yeah. Uh, stuff like that. I was like, yeah, I'm going to download all these fucking games and probably play at least one of them because I'm on Spider Man <laughs> remastered. I'm sort of like I start. I played like the first like <clears throat> mission. Obviously, I'm trying to still sort out my laptop and get streaming, which hasn't happened yet. But hopefully, at some point, it's fucking hard. Did you did you ever play that on PS4, or is this your first, My first time play playing that I, game I've in general? I've done it. I've not done it. Done it. So um, this is going to be new for me, as it is for people that haven't fucking seen me play a game before. Uh, Miles Morales was good. I'd do that again. I'd mm-hmm. do that on full thing and just enjoy the story for what it is instead of, at the moment, just trying to fucking perfect it. So. Have you completed it? Have you completed it? Or? I've finished Miles, so I'm just fucking about in that, trying to get all the extra stuff. All right. Oh. So, no, I'll play it again. I'll do, I'll yeah. do lots of things. Like, we will do lots of things. At the same time next week. Oh, when... absolutely. Someone's announced yes, that they've always, done yeah. something. Oh, also fucking um, Friday night dinner. Paul Ritter sadly passed away uh, two days ago. That news kind of broke yesterday morning. Yeah, yesterday. Yeah. Um, Fifty-four yeah. years old. That's Jane. no age at all. Surrounded by his wife and kids. Um, so the thoughts are obviously with them at the moment. That's a very sad thing. That's a great show. A real yeah. shame for them. Hello, you're listening to Nerd Bubble oh, Podcast shit. with your hosts George and Connor. <laughs> It finishes rendering. Right. <laughs> Hang on, let me just fucking do that again. What a way to ruin a moment, eh? I was going to say, what was that? I thought you had Friday night dinner in the background. I thought you were trying to shout or something. No, just because I was, I was pre-rendering the um the stuff for this one, so I can literally just drag it, drop it in, and then render the new files on it. Because I'm sort of playing about with how the intro comes in and out at the moment, and I need to sort some stuff out but um yeah so it's a shame that um Paul Ritter sadly passed away um yeah obviously everyone that worked with him and like his family and all the people at Channel 4 are immensely sad but his family's like the main concern it was a great show like in 2011 it started there was a uh, 10th anniversary sort of like look back on it that I think they've already filmed I don't know if they'd filmed the 7th series because the 6th series feels very much like a kind of ending for it I don't expect it to carry on right. without him because he's one of obviously the main characters. He's one of the main, and quite funny, um, it kind of doesn't work without him. Did didn't they didn't the episodes get added to Netflix recently? Because I think for the longest time it had like two or three seasons, and then it, I don't know if all of it. Yeah, it's so up to series five on Netflix, and then series six is on all four. Okay, so no, I might actually give it a proper on. proper watch. I might actually give it a proper proper watch. I think so. I finished the first season. I, uh, yeah, so I did the first season and then I didn't watch any more because I think it was just the second season. But now I've got four more seasons to play with, so yeah. I might it actually great. give it, it more of a double. Mm. It's weird to think of like it's been on for the last ten years. <clears> I remember it coming out and how like it. It's Sherlock in terms of the way it doesn't come out like the next year straight after. It sort of gives itself enough time to sort time of, to breathe. Time to mm. breathe and actually they. I think the guy and all the people that were created in it had the right idea of like. We, when we know what stories we want to make, we make them to the sort of like the best of their ability. And yeah, like, absolutely. absolutely. It, it's the Rick and Morty thing of like, if we space it out enough, then you know you're going to have less bad episodes. They're going to be just all quality hitters, and that's especially for the latter se- the latter series really comes into effect when there's at least two years sort of between them. And the latest one was, I think, beginning. I think beginning of lockdown. I think it was the beginning of lockdown. I'm not sure for um, okay. uh, series six. So um, we'll see how. Yeah, it was. I remember watching it. We'll see if they've if they filmed a seventh series. It will most certainly be the last. I don't think they should feel a bit Continue, wrong. To carry yeah, on. it's a bit weird how we've gone for like the um, the people that play the two nans died sort of close to each other, and then you know Martin himself now as well. Um, Sad mm. time, so uh, rest in peace, Paul Ritter. Fantastic actor. Paul Ritter. It wasn't just in Friday Night Dinner, it was also in Harry Potter and James Bond as well. 
as sort of like yes. little um yes characters yeah. done a lot of more work besides that you know i'm i'm would like to actively seek out more of his work and see what he did i know he was very very good in the theater from all the stuff i've read from articles and that that came out over the last day or so to um honor him so everyone do yourself a favor and watch something with paul ritter in this, yeah, this yeah, paul ritter week, in. And paul ritter. We'll, um, yeah we'll honor him in our own way but until then we can always find us here on this humble channel as we hopefully continue to sort of stutter and grow i know we've been a bit up and down with stuff trying to sort some shit out but we'll be back stronger than ever before next week as always thank you to connor for being part of this um no it's all right mate it's fine i want to get it's an honor, mate. contact throughout the week at place to course facebook twitter and instagram and the emails connor come to where the nerd nerd bible contact at gmail.com ignore the it's nerd bible contact at gmail.com any good. questions any john walker fan mail any uh sebastian stan in his Captain America accurate costume because I don't know if I did send you that on Instagram the other day. I mean, yeah, I want that costume yes. on Sebastian Stan at some point. If not in this show, then any point in the future. Fair enough. Um, and yes. we will see you, I guess, the same time next week for more of this yes. stuff. And shenanigans and whatever. Well, we'll so thank you very much, everybody. See you. And now... Stay pasty.